If I say with Jimre, just I mean bare fifteen minutes if na now share video we mean said an kasakesi. Yen te video we must say with a munya butre. Anybody can say he heard from God. After all, we were not there when he or she heard. So how can we distinguish distinctively a real man of God? Now you like controversy, so you keep asking me controversial <laughs> questions. You press, you thrive in controversy too. <laughs> well, um, that's actually an existential question. It's a real question that Christians um, face. In Matthew 7, I think from verse 15, yes, Jesus says, Beware of fake prophets, those who will come to you uh, disguised as uh, sheep, but they are, in, uh, yeah, they are wolves in sheep uh, clothing. clothing. He said, beware of them, they are going to come. Then Jesus made a reference like, it's by their fruit, we shall, you shall know them. Know them. <clears throat> so, but today, self, it's not just by their fruit, you shall know them, because sometimes they can disguise themselves with fruits. Okay? For instance, miracle. Yes. And all of us here are living, we have witnessed that miracles have been faked a number of a times, lot, a, a lot, lot of you know. So, one can come perform such miracle which people can see. But because we don't have the patience, the time, even the resources to go and make verification and investigation. So you just see what has happened and you don't know what, what happens behind yeah. the scene and all of that. So that's a fruit. It's, in quotes. In quotes, a good fruit. So anybody who sees that, we'll be forced to believe that this is a true prophet of God. Some uh, engage in uh, maybe... Uh, let's call it camera uh, charity, you know, buy food stuff, go and distribute yeah. to the poor. That's a fruit. Too. Yeah, too. So, and, so it becomes difficult to even distinguish um, a real prophet and um, a false one because the false ones have now known how to use even the true fruits of the good prophet to hide their fakeness, so to say. So a Christian has to be very subtle has to be very, very wise to know that. So th there is no calibrated um, uh, yeah. measurement by which I can give anybody another. But as a Catholic, as a Catholic, we have our established codes. A it's difficult for a priest in the Catholic Church, yes, to deceive um, the parishioners because every Catholic to a large extent knows what a priest is required to do. To do. But what you teach, and what you practice. So for Christians generally, I would say that uh, the devil is subtle. You know, Jesus said we should be wise like the serpents, serpents. you know, reference to the devil, but innocent as the, the devil is. And the Bible said the angel is like, uh, the angel of darkness can disguise like the angel of light. of light. So me, basically, maybe general principle, but not, um, you know, like a rule, is um, the content of their message measure the content of their message, see it by what Jesus taught. And luckily for us, we have the four gospel. Whatever any prophet or man of God teaches you, don't be lazy. Weigh it with what Jesus That's has right. taught. They are all spread out there. Then by the Acts of the Apostles too. Fortunately, we have a book also called the Acts, Acts of, of the Apostles. Apostles. But there you find out what the apostles did and even what they taught. They didn't teach anything different from the Lord Jesus, and, and they were always making references. So any Christians, whatever you hear, no matter how, no matter how aromatic and romantic it may sound and sweet it is, weigh it with what Jesus said. Try to find if there is a connection, if there is a correlation, if it accentuates what Jesus um, you know, taught. And even by our action, let me give you a very practical example. Yes, this one is also controversial. Okay. This one is also controversial. A prophet of God is driving. Okay, let me use car. <laughs> right? Okay, he's driving a Rolls Royce Phantom. The time, I'm just thinking about the biggest car now that ordinary mortals cannot uh, afford. You know, there are such cars that are designed, they can only be produced by um, direct request. Yes. The cost in Nigeria, maybe they'll cost. Hundreds, if not millions, millions, it's millions of three hundred millions. Yeah, uh, yeah, kind of like that. And I are using it to tell people that this is a sign that God has blessed you. Uh, you are prospering because you have got the anointing, and you showed the car. Did Jesus do that? But they will always say that um, Jesus actually requested for a horse that's not been ridden by anybody. Yes. So which means that horse is very expensive. 
classy, exclusive, and um, they use it to back up their quest for massive luxury, wealth, and affluence. So in that light, they would also run to that verse of the Bible that Reggie said, requested for a horse that took him to Jerusalem. That's why I say they are sort of, and that's a wrong um, is a Jesus. Is a Jesus' interpretation yes. of the Bible. That Jesus, first of all, it was not a horse Jesus rode. It was a, a donkey. Okay, donkey maybe. A donkey. They fall a donkey. So, and that 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 also makes it even clear. During Jesus' time, there was horse, and there were chariots. If you were, in fact, chariots were for kings, royalty. Luxury. It's a luxurious this thing. They understand. Mm. Jesus did not request for that. He requested for donkey. Donkey was like. Everybody owned a donkey, donkey because you need it for your farm work. So you can call it the lowliest like of the, possession. The, the gura gura, the downfall thank of you now. Very, thank you very much. So if you come in our time, the donkey in Otomomba might present the Toyotas, you know, the mm. normal ones mm, okay. ahead that uh, anybody who works uh, where can afford and stuff like that. So that's what Jesus requested. And he requested, requesting that was symbolic, fulfilling scripture. Um, Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 9 says, Behold your king coming on the fall of a donkey. Because Jesus always tried to fulfill scripture. Scriptures. So that people will know that what that prophet wrote, this is Jesus fulfilling it, coming on a donkey. The donkey is symbolic of humility, simplicity, docility, obedience, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, so Jesus is coming simple, even though he's king. Kings do not ride. Uh, uh, on donkey, he should have had. He should have requested. I know nobody could refuse him anything. Yes. So he could have told them to go to the palace of Herod or palace of Pilate or tell them to give me a, a, a chariot, a chariot dro- driven by a horse. Then you will know that Jesus was talking about um, private jets, about private jets and all of that. So by their fruit you shall know them. When they use this scripture to justify what the life of Jesus or the apostles. Um, does not then you know that they are doing a wrong interpretation so now am i saying that men of god should not enjoy life no that's not what i'm saying is this not good life the church has made three bedroom uh, available. available for me and my associate we are two priests then i want to take the money of the people or tell them to pay tithes more do this so so i can build a duplex of uh, uh of 10 rooms just for me and him no that's that's I am not saying men of God shouldn't live a good life, but we know there is a difference between modesty and flamboyance. flamboyance. Men of God, prophets of God are not called to flamboyant life. Anyway, any preaching, every day, then someone will cancel a mood, or be a question be with her. attach not my non no home, we are some of the about tight any charity home with a munti. There is a maxim or a mantra, it is a word within the Christian church within the Christian industry, per se. Once you say or speak against something that is not good, that is done by a man of God, done by the church, or done by a leader in the church, the, the, the word that comes as an attack to you is touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So which leads to this question, who actually is the anointed. Who is the prophet? Who is not meant to be touched? The member, the pastor, the bishop, or the apostle? That, I think that thing is from Psalm 105, verse 15. Touch not my anointed ones, and do my prophet no harm. If you read the, the, the whole of that psalm, um, that was, I think that was David recounting how God saved the people of Israel mm-hmm. when they were a nobody yet when they have not formed their nation when they were moving from egypt looking for a place to stay mm. and i think we're describing mm-hmm. how god saved them from kings and soldiers and armies and all of that and even you know so he was using that to describe the 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 the, the protection of god on them and he said god said to any danger or anybody who threatened them touch not my anointed and do my prophet no in context, it was, re- it was referring to the entire Israelite mm-hmm. nation. Mm-hmm. So that scripture is not exclusively for ministers of God, for the ordained ministers of God, for those who are going to ministry. It is not exclusively for them. And like I will always say, 
Me, I, I pray always for God's protection. <laughs> Everybody likes, um, you know, a life that is devoid of uh, harm. I pray for God's protection. protection. I don't want anybody to hurt me or harm me. I don't want to hurt any other person. But touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. It's a privilege and a prayer. It's not a right. It's not a right. And yeah, I, people use it always. It is not, uh, it's, it's not, um, sometimes they miss apply you to men of God. I just said, touch not my anointed and do my prayer no harm, no. And yes, of all the church members, no, you know, I am anointed, no. It is a kind of touch my anointed and do my prayer no harm, no. And yes, I was so for home, come on, I did. Also, Cassadia, no. And home, come on, would you know. If men of God enjoy immunity from correction mm. or from even criticism, mm -hmm. no, even Jesus suffered the worst of criticism and Jesus mm -hmm. offered very, um, uh, stringent criticisms mm -hmm. against the religious authorities of those days, you know. So, for me, that word is generally for the people of Israel. So we can actually use generally for Christians. For Christians. So, if we're adopting that word inclusively, it means everybody that is a child of God. Yes. Or let me stress it: everybody that is born again is the every anointed. child of God is the anointed. Even, wait, even non-Christians, you are a Muslim. Why should anybody just touch you for doing for nothing? Mm -hmm. Even if I disagree with you. You are a Muslim, I'm a Christian. You say, okay, Muhammad is the greatest of all prophets. And I say, no, I don't believe. I shouldn't kill you for that. For I shouldn't that. touch you. You are a child of God on that um, level. Yes. I would even rather that Christians will use that quotation more for spiritual forces that you yeah. can't see. Okay. Father, Titan, charity, and um, would I say every um, act of philanthropism? With your tights, are you met... Um, if you are coming to church and you met a situation that requires somebody that if you don't intervene immediately, the person may even lose his life. I said, use your tights immediately on the person. Come to church. When they call tight payers with your empty hand, Stand come up. and receive your blessing and go. And some people felt like I was uh, unnecessarily being sensational. And I meant it. I meant it. First John, God love First John. I think chapter 4, he said, how can you love God whom you do not see if you do not lo love, love your neighbor? neighbor? So it's not about hierarchy of uh, values, maybe tight and charity, which one is... Uh, ranks most. Uh, which one ranks most. No, it's not, it's not about that. It's, it's about doing the right thing at the right time. time. And by the way, tight is not of any superior value to other means of giving in the church. There are very different ways of giving in the church. Sure. Some can give through tithing. Some can give through donation. It can be done. Elena Mekano, say, any tight in Kwan, it is a old Dunitia Masoreno. Busy as I am a co is a Methodist. What is it? A Dana, a Timoy, a Sumia Meno, a near dear, a year Jewish boys, a near Bobby Miso. It was a Tria Dineca. It is a Mekan Soro, what they are. Nothing may talk collection near the Tria Dineca, a near Bonnet, what is it? By Gana and Soreno, or one a CBO Dino. What is it? And a building or Modia. It took a two collection man out of the old on by day. But as if your bills no be treated, you are fine. But tight in the massa. For coming young, can we see any kind of windy? Utia or collection say beer, it be a bills, be about what tiny light in this animal, no man, one out quite so well, you so. Utia no problem. But so as I said, so sick, I said, make a tight tightener, make a tightener, we could just see now one whiner, and dear massa. Did a soft one acre. What is it? Tell a soft one acre. Mundi. And be, cannot be generosity for me as a thousand near. You give in your billions, I give in my thousands as much as I can. So the problem is. Mama as of Fusica. Maybe I'll fill it so which has of Fusica. Wait much in this car. Why not? But tight, no. Munja and Champentia tax. Munja tight in the tria. Now from many and can we see any kuna for? What is it? Is that uh, some of our brothers elevated tight and made it look like it carries a special blessing. You can't find in any other giving, mm. and he also carries a special cost. Mm -hmm. You cannot find in any other to be place. Light. Yes, it's not true. It is not true. true. If it were that special, Jesus would have talked about it. Mm -hmm. The apostles would have, would have talked about it. So I have no problem with people who pay that. I have some of my parishioners who pay that on their own. Nobody forces them. They believe in it and all that. But there are other parishioners who also give to the church in other Always. ways. For me, give the way. 
you, you, are led. you are led and don't be under compulsion and don't think that uh, by doing that that you are obligating God to do something to do something no give because it's good to give and giving is even a universal principle buddhists give yeah. muslims know the importance That's of okay. giving and even non-Christians, they give. We have heard of even atheists who give out in charity. So giving has a universal value at this. So there is, honestly speaking, there is nothing supernaturally special about tithes. There is not special about launching or about giving uh, donations. And then charity, of course, you know, that one, you can't get away from it. So I told my people, don't, re don't let tithes replace charity. Don't be comfortable giving only tithes or giving money in the church, church. and, and overlooking the, the this. In, because on the last day, the last judgment given by the Lord Jesus himself has always been on charity. charity. Okay, every time for video I'm the buyer and Kaseni. What for in some work can you mood? We tell it here in our sample because in some work can you answer some room. Charity, anyone here. To work around and say, to be a war bro, the mommy be a war tissue. Ne paka krama nindi. So pwene yon mwen tam wogane yi. Obye nwa orenti ya soye na anu woho. Omo to, oma toto, ibi kwe si dayen no. Fati ase, it is all maso fisike edi ya, no problem. But em mani nye bae fwa se wasu kutu ya taiti de maso fwo. En amun kutu ya. Amun jaya taiti ni tu ya. Namun hui kuna fwi nyan ke wisi nyan. Bit maka se, eh, so de, eh, taiti ne ba, nye nye de kofi ya wisi nyan mwa, edifiko yi nyan kamwa. Now I'm from bar. It was say, "Mas obwa, obwa." Ote was it tight? No man, no one do my prophet no harm. We a Christian ni mapa. O can hobi. We a Christian ni na inya meba. O can hobi. Enya aso four verse. Abushi apome das. Midi de kona babuati. Yebesa babiu.